Hello, welcome once again to Ridgely Ministries and our Wednesday Words for Life Bible Study. I'm Pastor Patrick. And I'm Lady Takesha. And again, it is an honor that you would join us for our Wednesday Bible Study. And we're finishing up Romans Road or the Book of Romans, Paul's letter to the Roman Church. So this will be part six. Mm -hmm. Uh, before we go to this scripture, let's open up in the word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you and we praise you for this opportunity again to you, uh, have this Bible study and to study your scriptures, Lord. We know that your word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. So we ask you to uh, give us the understanding that we need, that it will illuminate our path, that it will show us the way. Yes, and more importantly, will show us who you are and give us a better understanding as, of who you are as our Lord and Savior. And we thank you and we praise you for all things. Yes, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So again, this is uh, the culmination of mm -hmm. the Paul's letter to the Roman church, part six. And our title, uh, subtitle today is Live a Life That Honors God. Because as Christians, ultimately this is how we live mm -hmm. that really speaks to the world as to who Jesus Christ truly is. That we are um, are to be the image, um, be the mirror that reflects the image of Christ. So, uh, again, this the theme of this uh, letter to the Roman Church was about the division, dealing with the division mm -hmm. in the church. But Paul speaking to them and saying that we should unify. Right. That this church, who were uh, Gentile Christians and Jewish Christians who were at odds should unify because the world is looking in at the church and they need to see the truth. Uh, some points, uh, unity in the body of Christ is essential as a witness to the unbeliever, Amen. very important. Also, the believer's interaction within the church should mirror our interaction with Christ. So if Christ is your Lord and he's giving you the grace and the mercy and the understanding and the patience and the long suffering that we receive from Christ, that we should also um, share that or give that to one another. Uh, and finally, when the world sees the Christian living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, they will see the answer to the ills of the world. And um, right now the world is uh, starkly divided. Mm -hmm. There's division throughout uh, the land. Uh, this is not a time for the church to be divided. This is a time that we should come together and to show the world that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. So let's go to chapter 14. We are going to deal with chapters 14 through 16, the end of uh, the book of Romans. So let's start at uh, chapter, uh, actually verse 1 of chapter 14. All right. It says, him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. Hmm. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up. For God is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the living and the dead. So the main theme of verses 1 through 9, well, I should say that was reiterated. Mm. Um, a couple things was uh, if someone is doing this and it's not... Um, you know, sin, mm -hmm. that we shouldn't judge or condemn uh, whatever version you're reading, that we should not find ourselves constantly condemning and judging one another in the body of Christ because we should all do things, as it repeatedly said, 
as unto the Lord, to do these things as unto the Lord. And so uh, I heard this quote um, many times, and I had to do research to see exactly where it came from, but this was actually went throughout the church age for hundreds of years. And um, it's a simple quote, and I encourage you to write this thing down mm -hmm. because it will help how you fellowship and how you interact with one another in the church. So it goes like this. It says, in the essentials, unity. That's right. In the non-essentials, liberty. Mm -hmm. And in all things, charity. That's so right. what does that mean? In the essentials, we consider doctrine. That's right. The word of God, the yea and the amen. amen. What Christ has said. Um, whether it's in red or the Old Testament, the New Testament, That's it is right. all inspired by God That's that right. this is his infallible word to us to teach us how to live. And so when it comes to doctrine, whether it's descriptive or prescriptive, mm. unity, <laughs> we should unify right. based on what God said. Mm. And then there's non-essentials that um, we tend to hold to as our opinions or our truths or how we should live based on our relationship right. with Jesus Christ. And um, they may, they, it's not necessarily doctrine, but um, it is essential to us. But when it's only essential to us, we consider that the non-essential. It's not saying it's not important. Right. It is important to you, but it may ne necessarily be important to someone else. And Paul is giving a great example of that, of just simply eating food. That one will say, well, I don't eat pork. Mm -hmm. And the other one says, I love my rib, my pork ribs, bacon. and that or bacon <laughs> or ham. And so one is not to be esteemed over the other, or one is not to condemn the other. That in these non-essentials, there is, should be liberty. I should allow you to eat your vegetables, and that's what you eat, and not condemn you, right. and not try to impose upon you. But also, that I'm not going to offend my brother or my sister in Christ by eating a full ham right in front of them and they don't eat pork. Uh, and we laugh about that, but this can cause a rift in That's the right. church. And we saw it there in the um, first church, the first century church, where um, there was a dispute even about dietary needs and how what we should and should not eat. We knew there were specific, specific dietary laws for the Jews mm -hmm. and that they could not eat unclean animals. They could not eat certain things. But the Gentiles said, we grew up on this. Right. Uh, we don't see a problem because we are um, walking in the liberty that Christ has set for us. So, so Paul had to set things straight to say, in these non-essentials, there should be liberty. But in all things, yeah, right. charity, that we should have love in action and whether we disagree on what to eat or not or what day to worship on mm -hmm. or not. And whether we set aside one day as to honor the Lord, whether it's Saturday or Sunday, we're all believers. Right. Whether we um, consider every day holy and we have that we should not dispute with one another, but that we should deal with one another in love and charity. Amen. Pastor, that's just 100% spot on. The reason that some of our churches are in disrepair is because we are majoring in the minors mm -hmm. and minoring in the majors. The things that God did not say hard and fast, we are holding that as if it is the law and holding people to the letter of that law. And it doesn't put them in heaven or in hell. Mm -hmm. And then the things that God is concerned about, those issues of sin, those issues uh, uh, that 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 um, impact whether or not we love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves, it seems like those can take the back mm -hmm. seat in some in some of our in some of our um in some of our branches of the vine. And unfortunately, um that's that's not where it should be. So here's Paul emphasizing, listen, let's not let's not be having these little doubtful disputations, these mm -hmm. little things that have to do with our personal liberties, mm -hmm. trying to make it law for somebody, but it's really just our personal convictions. He's saying, listen, that's not where it's at. It really is making sure that you do not cause, like, like we're going to talk about now, your brother or your sister not to stumble because it is all about charity and making sure that you demonstrate the love of Christ and how you respond and react to them in love. Amen. Amen. So our first takeaway today is resist criticism <sighs> against believers. And when I say resist criticism because the world is starkly criticizing us right now. Oh my goodness, yeah. And so when I talk about criticism, I want to talk about from without and from 
within. Let's um, first talk about from within. Verse 10 says this, but why dost thou judge thy brother or why dost thou set a, at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Oh, no, that's right. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every mm -hmm. one of us shall give an account of himself to God. And so um, we should resist that um, criticism or condemnation uh, of our brother within. The world is, again, the world is looking at it. So um, we should resist uh, condemning or judging our brother on social media or in conversations with unbelievers or um, that fighting or that disputes and mm -hmm. um, the Bible says that, you know, these genealogies and disputes and we're fighting over minor things. Minor and, things. And, and we bring in judgment or condemnation to our brother because they won't see things our way. Again, the world is looking out, looking at us, but God mm -hmm. ultimately is looking at us. And when we stand before him, we will give an account for everything we say, oh everything we do, and even the thoughts in our heads. So we should resist criticizing believers. We should resist um, uh, judging or condemning someone because they're not doing the things all the way we should do it or preach it the way we should preach it or advocate the way we should advocate. Be careful how you're criticizing or condemning believers within the church. That is the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, the one thing the enemy wants the church to do is to fight on social media. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be out on a public platform ripping each other apart because then the world can sit back and say, if that is what a Christian is, I don't want to be it. I already have enough conflict in my life. I do not need to be in an organization or a denomination or whatever that's already fighting with one another. Mm -hmm. I need mm -hmm. peace. And that is what the world is looking for. They're looking for a difference and they're looking for peace. So we have to be so mindful. There is a way to have a conversation with your brother or sister. Um, you, you can disagree and you can agree to disagree, but there's a way. There's a reason there's instant messaging. There's a reason <laughs> you can go. You can, I mean, there's a reason you can call people on the phone. Some, you have many times those, that person's phone number. If you don't, there's a way to do it discreetly so that you do not um, you do not shed blood um, all over all over uh, the, the social media platforms because at the end nobody but the devil gets the glory out of that and we are not in the business of getting the, giving the devil the glory we are here that God might be glorified but then we can still deal with human issues or questions uh, and we can deal with those in a civil way in a mature way uh, in a tactful way. And also in a discreet way so that people will see a unified church and not a fractured one. Amen. And also dealing even in the local church, uh, many times we are taking the offense of someone else My because goodness. of what we harbor in our heart towards that person. That's so right. they always say the enemy of my enemy is my friend or a birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you tend to, if I have an art with somebody and then someone has an art with that same person, then we get together. Not only do I have an art, but I take their art and say, I take their offense and it just only exacerbates the situation and we don't do things the Bible way. The Bible says if your brother has an art with you, you, you go, go to, to them. them. It didn't say the person, if you have an art, you go to them. If they, you realize someone has an art with you, you go to them mm -hmm. and deal with the situation. Uh, and so we don't want to get into talking and the conversations and we don't want to get into the gossiping and discord. the back, what we call backbiting or sowing discord among the brethren. That is very specific to the church, to the believer. God hates that. It is an abomination to him. So we need to begin to stop condemning because if they've offended you, go to them or they should come to you. If there's an art reconcile it. That's it. He, Jesus said this, come let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, I'll make them white as snow. Now, if God is willing to say, come on, I already know what you did. Come on, it. let's talk about it. Let's deal with it. That's the same way we need to deal with each other. Uh, uh, the, it, technology is not the platform to air your differences or to air your frustrations. Um, 
you know, your brother and sister in Christ who also has an issue is not the platform right. to go. And that will never resolve the issue. That will only, again, add fuel to the fire. That's so right. we need to learn how to resist because we will give an account to God in the end. Right. But then also let's talk about resisting condemnation without, from without. Uh, Psalms 1 and 1 says this, Blessed is the man who right. walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, mm. nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Again, Jesus said this, The world loves its own, right. but he also says this, They will hate you before my namesake. So expect people to hate the church simply because of who Jesus Christ is. Mm. It really has nothing to do with you. But you have to be careful not to be siding with the unbeliever right. and speaking out against the church because the unbeliever, the scornful, the sinner, the um, unwise counsel, the mm -hmm. ungodly counsel is having words about the church. That is not a time for you to you because you have an art to chime in or side with them, because if you don't, you are blessed. If you do, you are cursed. So resist the criticism. Amen. Um, against believers because the world is going to persecute the church is going to persecute the um, believers in Jesus Christ and we as believers need to unify with fellow believers and uh, truly uh, be one force against the forces of the devil amen um, and that's not to say that you're going to agree with everything that exactly. you see because mm -hmm. there are some there are some unfortunate uh, situations where um, every shepherd's not living the way they should be living, and every Christian is not living the way sh they should be living. Um, but there, again, we've all been there. We've all been there. Um, so that's, that's definitely not um, not saying that you agree with everything. And what the person who is criticizing is saying, they might be one hundred percent correct. But guess what your job is? Guess what our job is? First thing we have to mm. do is go to the Lord in prayer. You have to go to God in prayer, one, mm. because he can give you what to say. He can give you how to say it and when to say it and where to say it instead of reacting out of our emotions. And if there's anything that has split the church, mm -hmm. if there's anything that has done is people acting off of their flesh, walking in the flesh and moving in a carnal mindset. They got to clap back at everything. They got to fuss about everything. They got to agree. Listen, you don't have to do that. When you realize that you're mature mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that you're an adult, you're going to realize that you don't have to answer every post. You don't have to react to everything you see. Some of it is the beginning. The beginning of it is to pray. Say, God, do you want me to say anything at all? God, Lord, I lift up my sister to you because clearly she's disgruntled. Lord, I lift up my brother to you. Clearly he's been hurt or he's frustrated and he's going to regret what he's posting. Father, show me how to entreat him in love. Mm -hmm. Show me how to approach her in a way where she realizes that I, I'm not trying to uh, tear her down, but to build her up so that there might be unity in the church. We've got to do things differently, church. We've got to do it differently. We cannot do the things that the world does and then expect the world to respect us mm -hmm. um, as the body of Christ and the kingdom of our God. And so how we present Christ to the world, um, that is what we, what we are going to be judged on. That's what's going to be on our account. So please keep that in mind, um, whether it's face to face or virtually, that, that God is expecting us to respond in a way that glorifies him. Amen. Amen. So verse 13 um, culminates that by saying, mm -hmm. let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Many people are falling because of criticism in the church, because mm -hmm. of condemnation. Now, if if the scripture says there is therefore no more condemnation right. to them that believe. In Christ Jesus. In right. Christ Jesus. Them that believe in Christ, there's no more condemnation. Then here it is. Who are we to condemn our brother? Bring up their past. Bring up what they've done. Not forgive them. So don't put that stumbling block. This is a lot of the reasons why church hurt. I have an issue with that term, but um, a lot of church hurt happens in the church because we're still condemning our brother mm -hmm. and laying a stumbling block. So rather judge the stumbling blocks. Mm -hmm. Deal with those things that are causing people to fall rather than the individuals who may have caused it or may be falling that we should deal with the stumbling blocks that are put before them. And that is how we react or interact with one another. 
Amen. 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 So as we're moving, we're in still in chapter 14, verses 14 to 23. Mm -hmm. It says this, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, here it is, now walketh thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Let not then your good mm -hmm. be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. For he that is in these things serveth Christ is, is, is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Amen. So, so right there um, leads us to our second takeaway Practice harmony Amen. in the church. Uh, we shouldn't be coming to church to fight, to pick a fight. <laughs> we shouldn't come to church with an or come to church with to look for strife or to create strife. Practice harmony, and I believe it starts first individually, personally. Mm -hmm. I believe if we deal with what is in our heart That's and it. what things that are causing us not to live peaceably with ourselves, um, we won't c tend to come with. Um, this pain or this hurt or react when, you know, somebody steps on our toe. Mm -hmm. But actually the real issue is what may have happened at home or what you may have done to yourself that has caused an even bigger wound in your life. So practice harmony in the church. Verse uh, 19 says this, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace right. and the things wherewith one may edify one another. So uh, harmony is so important. So when I think about harmony, I think about um, an agreement. We have to be, we have to agree. Right. We have to agree on what we are doing, why we are here. We have to agree. We can't be at church or come to gather at church or be in Christendom or serve Christ for different reasons. We have to agree on why we are here. Amen. We have to be on one accord, not only in agreement, but we have to be going in the same direction. How can two walk together, except they be agreed. So we agree, we're on one accord, and it's also, harmony is a consistent, orderly, or pleasing arrangement pleasing. of parts. Pleasing. Pleasing. <laughs> Makes me think of music. Right. So I think all of us out there have heard uh, uh, on some level, whether it's, um, I, I won't even bother with it, but let's just say you've heard a group, and that group, somebody was out of sync with the mm -hmm. rest. Um, what happens is, you don't you might look at the one person who's off key but in essence the entire group they're gonna have words about the entire group they may say something about the person but the entire entity that's trying to be in harmony because there's one or two with discord it impacts the entire group and the experience that one has with that with that group um, so God is saying, listen, let's be like-minded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's, let's start there with having like-mindedness about Jesus Christ, like-mindedness about how we should serve one another. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. when there's one that has their own agenda, their own idea, when we're supposed to be singing in, 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 in concert and you do, trying to do a solo and do your own thing, <laughs> listen, it's, it's, a, it's not a pleasurable experience, all right? So we have to think about that in terms of love and service in the church. Harmony is an arrangement. It's mm -hmm. an agreement that this is my part. This is your part. This is the music. This is how we're going to walk. And we all work together to have uh, this beautiful arrangement and this, it's a beautiful that is sound. pleasing. It's a beautiful sound mm -hmm. when it and works. And ultimately, more importantly, pleasing to the Lord. To the Lord. That's mm -hmm. right. That's mm -hmm. right. And that's what, that's what we want. We want the sound that comes from our worship, the sound that comes from our service, the sound that comes from how we treat our neighbor to be something that strikes a beautiful note in the ear of God because he responds in a favorable way to that. Um, when he hears discord, he got to come make it right because he's mm -hmm. a God of order. Mm -hmm. So he's going to come make it right. Mm -hmm. So it's up to us to make sure that we work together with the people we are serving with and the people we believe with. These are fellow believers mm -hmm. uh, having a special love for the household of faith so that when we do come together, that what Christ sees and what the world sees is something that is attractive and desirable to bring glory to God. Amen. Amen. So how, how do we do this? How do we 
as a body fitly joined together uh, with our di- at different parts right. coming together doing the arrangement how can we do this where there is harmony mm-hmm. uh, it starts with love amen it starts with love so let's okay. i want to go over to first corinthians the uh 13th chapter and we're going to um, break it up. We'll, let's read first, verses 1 through 3 first. It says, As though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and have not charity, I become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. We know this one. Noise. Uh-huh, look at that. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Not just I have, but I am nothing. Verse 3 says, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. So I could be serving in the church. I can be in amongst the believers, doing, preaching, teaching, prophesying, tongues, interpretation. Yes, we believe in those two according to the scripture. Absolutely. Every gift. I can be operating in every gift that is afforded to the believer but if I don't have love, I'm just making noise and I am I nothing. Am. And there is discord. It is a discordant sound in the church. There is not, there is unity in the church. So um, our first thing, how do we be harmed is the act of love. It's charity. It's charity. Charity is the act of love. So we need to operate in love. Our actions should exude love. The reason why we're doing it is because we love God and we love people. Because if we love God... We will love people. If we just do this for ourselves or do this for people and don't include God, we'll get tired of people really quick and they will develop a discordant sound. Amen. We will be going through the motions, doing great, being big, being grand. Spectacular. But Spectacular. there's no love and God's not impressed. He said, you are nothing. And so then let's go down to verses four through seven. So we have, we need charity. We need to act in love. So what is love? Amen. Char- mm-hmm. Charity suffereth long, mm-hmm. suffereth long, suffereth long, long. suffering, suffereth long. And yep. is kind. Mm-hmm. Charity envieth not. You're going too fast. Oh, yeah. And is kind. <laughs> we need more kindness in the church. Lord, right, help us. Mm-hmm. Help us. Help us slow down. Charity envieth not. That means I, you, God is blessing you, and I rejoice with those who rejoice, and I mourn with those who mourn. I'm glad that you got the new house. I'm Amen. glad that you got the new car. I'm glad that you got the husband, <laughs> even though I'm still single. I'm glad that you got elevated in ministry. I'm glad that you got... I'm I, I'm I'm glad Truly, that you are sincerely glad. I'm rejoicing with you. Right. Charity does not envy. I'm not getting bent out of shape. You know, some we smile, and then hmm. when we get home, we okay. upset and said, "Why no? We don't envy what other people have and what God, how God has blessed fellow believers." Right. Because we always say this, and the song says, "If He did it before, it He'll do it is. again. If He did it for you." He'll do it for me. Amen. Mm-hmm. Charity vaunted this not charity vaunted not itself is not puffed up. Not lifted, not pride. Just some because somebody pats you on the back doesn't mean now you are the um part of the Trinity. Oh, because God. Trinity is three. <laughs> so you can't add a fourth and still call it the Trinity. Yeah. You're not elevated be- between before all men. You're not sitting before be- at the throne of God with the uh, 20 or 4 elders and right. the um, all the beasts of the heaven and the angels of heaven saying, holy, holy, holy. You're, you. you're, you're not there, right? You're not there. So we, we're not vaunted. We're not puffed up. We're humble. Doth mm-hmm. not behave itself unseemly. Especially when things don't go your way. And especially if the masses decide to act unseemly oh yes we're not going to jump on the bandwagon of the unseemly we're not going to do that mm-hmm. that's not love it's not that's no, not charity that's it's not, not love and action uh seeketh not her own is not pro- easily provoked so doesn't think do things for themselves is not narcissistic it's oh. not self-absorbed it's not um about me 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 oh sir Sir, Usually talking. when you don't make it about me, then I start acting unseemly. Wow. And then it says it is not easily provoked. provoked. The scripture says be quick to hear, yes. slow to speak, slow to wrath, anger, and sin not. Not easily provoked. You don't wear your emotions on your shoulder. Mm-hmm. You know, as soon as someone offends you or someone says something you don't like, 
You're just ready to fly off at the handle and give someone a piece of your mind. Not easily provoked. That's why it goes, goes back up to is long suffering, patient. What is the fruit of the Spirit? Amen. amen. We can deal with the fruit of the Spirit. That's a whole nother Bible okay. study Galatians. in itself. Go to Galatians 5, chapter 22, 23. Amen. In, in your private study. And the fruit of the Spirit should be exemplified in the believer. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So it thinks no evil. It rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. So it doesn't rejoice when, uh, it doesn't boost up when someone is sinning and it seems like they're prospering. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't try to point out, well, they did it. Why is it wrong? And they seem to be fine. But also, it doesn't rejoice in iniquity when somebody falls in That's sin. Right. And they have a hard fall. And you're rejoicing that they had a hard fall. Amen. Scripture says, if any man be overtaken in a fault, Amen. that you go and restore them. So this is how harmony is reached. That you do your part. Do it in love. Live a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit in God's church. Amen. And do what you know is right. Let's That's go right. back to Romans. Amen. Amen. And verse, chapter 14, verse 23. Says this, and he that doubteth is damned if he eats, because, if he, because he eateth not in faith, for whatsoever is not of faith, is sin. So whatsoever is not a faith, uh, and we say if you know to do right mm -hmm. and don't do it, yeah. it is sin. That's right. What we know to do right is by our faith, uh, faith in the scripture. Mm -hmm. The scripture tells you you believe it and you don't do it anyway, it is sin. So do what you know is right in the church. Mm -hmm. In your interaction, if you know what's right, the scripture lays out how we should interact, how we should love one another, mm -hmm. how we should have patience and be kind and long-suffering and good and meek towards one another mm -hmm. in the church. Um, that we should um, take care of our widows and our orphans, that we should honor our parents, that all these things that we know to do right, that we're not trying to kill someone's character, Amen. condemning the believers, that you know what to do, and if it is right to do what is right, and you will continue to create harmony among the believers. Amen. And love is always right. The Bible says... Can't never go wrong with God that. God is love. Mm -hmm. So if you mm -hmm. start with love, whatever your effort is, whatever you feel like you should or should not do, you need to ask, am I doing this out of love? I'm not, not selfish love, but uh, and not a love that will get you something in return, but a love that says, I'm seeking out my neighbor's, my, my neighbor's mm -hmm. um, well-being above my own. The Bible says to think on the things of others more than the things of yourself. And when you start with that point, you start at love, and you're going to realize, you know what? It's not right that, that I say this. It's not right that I do this because that's not born of love. Mm -hmm. And when you start with love, I promise you, like Pastor said, you will never go wrong. Amen. Amen. So uh, moving on. So now we're going to shift over to chapter 15, and we're going to deal with chapter nice. 15. Very important. Uh that's going to lead us actually 15 and 16, Amen. but spending most of our time in chapter 15 about um, how we should interact with one another. So let's read verses 1 through 7. Amen. I hope you got your Bible and I hope you're writing some things down because this is good stuff. This is verse uh, 1 of chapter 15. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. There mm -hmm. it is. There's love again. And not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good mm -hmm. to edification, so that our neighbor might be built. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. And whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience mm -hmm. and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Verse 5 says, Now the God, here it is, of patience, and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. Verse 6, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive you one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Amen. So so here it is in these verses um, 1 through 7. It really speaks to our interaction, but it really talks about not us per se what we will receive but what the person can receive from us because let me just um paint this picture that um when christ died he mm -hmm. died for us he didn't die for himself that's right he, he died 
for us and that we received something from them, um, from him. And so it really was about us receiving or that person that was in sin mm -hmm. receiving from the one who was selfless. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Christ was the epitome of selfless. He who knew no sin Thank you, became Jesus. sin for, for us. us. He who knew no death, who only knew immortality, became mortality. Hallelujah. And even submitted himself to the death of the cross, not for himself, but for us. That is completely yes. anti-narcissism. <laughs> we call selfless. Amen. In our fallen nature, it is easy to be selfish. Mm -hmm. It is easy to do things for self. I am doing it to be elevated. I'm doing it to be promoted. To promote it. I'm doing it to get something back for myself. I am doing this because I want to return for myself. The thing about it, as a believer, it is not about you. The scripture says, it is no longer I, but the Christ. Christ that dwells within me. So Christ dwelling within me, how was Christ? He was selfless. So don't look out for yourself when you're working in the church. Don't look out for yourself when you're working in the church because that leads us to our third takeaway. Mm -hmm. Each one support each other. Wow. Each one support each other. And so as you're coming into the church as a believer, we know you have needs and there will be always someone that will be there to meet your need. But you come in to see the needs of others and you as one support each other. Look at each individual mm -hmm as a body fitly joined together to see the need. And if God has given you the gift or the ability to meet that need, you should meet that need, whether they agree with you or not, whether they are at odds with you or not, whether you may consider them in the church as your enemy. Jesus said, love your enemy. Yeah. So be selfless, selfless yeah. not selfish. Philippians 2 and 3 says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, humility, um, let each esteem others that's right. better than his or herself. Amen. Um, I heard it said a long time ago uh, that more and more people, unfortunately, who are believers listen to the radio station WIIFM. And he, <laughs> this guy said that WIIFM was the radio station tuned to what's in it for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so more people now, unfortunately, instead of being selfless, mm -hmm. are selfish because if they do anything for you, they want to know what's in it for me. Mm -hmm. uh, some mm -hmm. people won't serve unless you pat them on the back. Some people won't. Um, they If you don't call their name on the program, they're not going to serve on the next one. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not God's way because it really is not, it really is not about us mm -hmm. being seen. It's not, it's not about who gets the credit. It's about who gets the glory. Mm -hmm. And God gets the glory. So when we think about our neighbor in that respect, we do it. Um, I tell you, somebody gave me something. Mm -hmm. And if you got to tell everybody you gave it to me, I don't <laughs> want it. You keep it. <laughs> and my husband, I was heated. I was on fire. I told my classes one day, if you do something for somebody, if you feel like you got to tell the whole universe, you got to tell the continental mm -hmm. United States of America that you did it. Here's what the scripture says. Verily, verily, I say unto you, you have your reward. That's your reward. That's your reward. That's all you're going to get because God doesn't even regard what you've done. You won't mm. see any eternal benefit from that. But if you do it in secret, the Bible says God will bless you openly. If you do things with a heart to, to see somebody else built mm. up. Mm. Now this, this, is, this is why this isn't a, po a popular uh, book. For a lot of people, they know they skip over, they go to the Psalms and then they skip <laughs> over to the parts that get them the car in the house. But here's the, here's a practical letter of pragmatism, like love your neighbor, do what God says. And when you do it, do it with a sincere heart, do it in a way that glorifies God and do it so that your neighbor is built up. And in a marriage, my husband and I, we always talk about this. Mm -hmm. If you take care of me and I, if I focus on taking care of you and you focus on taking care of me, we're going to be covered. We got this. We're taken care we're, of. We're taken care of. Mm -hmm. And I trust that my neighbor, I trust that he has has my best interest at heart as and, and, and I his. And so that's how we should be in the church as a mirror of Christ and his bride is that we should serve one another and, and do so not necessarily looking for anything in return, but just mm -hmm. because my neighbor would be edified or built up in God. That's the goal. Amen. Amen. So in verse five, it says, now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded. Yeah. So here's the God of patience and consolation 
grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, yeah. that ye may be made with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then when he gets to verse 7, it says, Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received Amen, us to the glory of God. And so this like-mindedness um, that we should have, uh, it tends to be, um, we tend to be like-minded in cliques. And um, I just really wanted to speak to uh, mm -hmm. those in the church um, that it's so important to bridge the gap in certain areas of our church that we can be this click like-minded and that click over here like-minded and that click over here like-minded and we be on one accord like-minded in Christ Jesus. No, we need to learn how to bridge the gap. So uh, bridge the gap between generations. Praise God. So important that you have generate for the older generation, the baby boomers or um, Generation X or uh, what generation are we? Uh, we uh, are. We are. Wow. No, we're, X. X. We're, we're X. X. We're, we're Generation X. X. Amen. You might be Generation X. I'm the one generation <laughs> after that. Oh, don't even try. <laughs> so, um, what are these generations that kind of have their own subculture? It has their own language, their own way of That's dealing right. with situations or dealing with things. Um, that you, we need to learn how to bridge the gap. That the, the scripture says that the older should teach the younger. Uh, and not because I want to use the younger to get some things done I want them to get done, right. but to prepare them and let them realize that they are just as important in the ministry mm -hmm. as the older is. Uh, our senior pastor, my father, used to always say this, that the youth are the um, leaders of today. Amen. They're not the leaders of tomorrow, that you should teach them and model them to lead today. Uh, Miles Monroe said, um, we need to learn how to hand off the baton right. while we're still yet alive, not them prying it out of our cold, dead hands in the casket, yeah. that we should learn how to bridge that gap between generations and also bridge this gap between genders. Amen. Uh, there's always a division that not only, yes, stay in your lane. Yes, there are roles um, specific to gender, genders in the church. But we need to learn how to bridge that gap. That mm -hmm. there is, are women. We're going to talk about this in chapter 16. Right. That there are women leaders in the church. Mm -hmm. And there is a great division and a great divide because we have stopped bridging that gap and stopped seeing the importance of the opposite sex. So we see that imbalance and we see that strife mm -hmm. and we see that disharmony or discord in the church, but also between cultures. Amen. And when I say cultures, I'm not going to say color because we're all colored. Amen. <laughs> some of us are just lighter than others. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> some are very high, high light and some of us are dark brown and very light, light brown, Amen. but we're all one color, all from the seed of a Adam. Amen. So, but we have to understand there are different cultures. Mm -hmm. There are different ethnic groups. There are different people from different countries and different um, social economic statuses and mm -hmm. different um, regions. I mean, I'm, I'm Northern. I'm considered what she would consider a Yankee boy. Um, Cause I'm from, actually I was originally from the Midwest, the Chicago area, but um, I'm Northern. So mm -hmm. I'm Yankee, I'm North. She's Southern girl. Absolutely. She's. Miami, Florida, and that we had to learn the different regions, <laughs> the cultures based on region, right. um, but we had to bridge that gap. Amen. Amen. God has a sense of humor he that he would have me, who was an introvert from the north, marry an extrovert from the south. And guess what? Through Christ, we have harmony. Amen. We work things out. So we have to learn. And I believe bridging the gap you have to be selfless. You can't get it in for you. If you go in for self and you go in how I'm going to get you, what's in it for me with them, I'm going to get you to do things so it will benefit me, you'll never bridge that gap. Mm. And that we must um, connect with one another Seriously. and see each other's gifts and how it will benefit, benefit the body as a whole and glorify God who is in heaven. So any narratives that mm -hmm. split and divide, you know it's demonic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Any narratives within or without the church, you have to think, if this is going to divide me or cause me to hate, mm -hmm. even if it seems like it's in the name of something good or in the name of a religion, uh, because I feel like my God is telling me that I can't love mm -hmm. another person or I can't serve 
another person, you know that did not come from God. Mm -hmm. And so we have to make sure that we are at this place where we are uh, making sure that God is glorified in the way we mm -hmm. bridge the gap. The scripture says in Psalm, one generation shall praise thy works to another. Mm -hmm. And that is what it should be. It should be a, an exchange of what God has done to keep us moving forward in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. And uh, just also very important that um, you don't look on the man does look on the outward appearance, mm -hmm. but we should not judge based on the outward appearance. And that goes both ways that we cannot hold someone to the standard and not likewise right. be um, held to the same standard. And that goes both ways and that we are not. I heard Ravi Zacharias say this, the great apologist. He said that we are so busy debating left and right, mm -mm. where she, we should be focused on up and down, mm -hmm. that everything we should do should go point up so that we sh would go up Amen. and that we do nothing that will pull us down and go down. <laughs> so, so our focus is off when we're going with the left and liberal or the right and conservative or whatever it is. No, it should be about God. Amen. For God I live and for God I die. He is the way, truth, and life. And ultimately, if I go that way, Amen. I'll escape <laughs> that Amen. way. Amen. 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 So, uh, so keep that in mind. So we're going to uh, go to our last point, And this is chapter 15, 8 through 33. We're not going to read it, but um, just highlight some points in it. But it also goes over into chapter 16 because our fourth takeaway is stay ministry minded amen. amen we're not talking about the work of the church mm -hmm. because many times we can stay focused on the work of the church not do things in charity not do things in love and stop doing things according to the scriptures right and we'll just be dealing with busy in the church um but not sitting at the feet of jesus and being ministry minded now keep this in mind when jesus came to the earth he came with a purpose mm -hmm. And it wasn't, he didn't just come straight to the earth and die on the cross. He lived 33 and a half years for a purpose. And that his last three and a half years, years of ministry was the most dynamic. And those three and a half years impacted the world in such a way that we are here today as believers in Christ. Amen. He went about doing his father's work. He didn't have a car, did not have a jet. Did not have a bike. No. Did not have a dunk. He didn't have a dunk until he came into Jerusalem. And that was for a short period of time. He was very active in ministry. He said, I must needs go mm -hmm. to Samaria. Because there was one woman at a well that he had to change her life. There was a Syrophoenician woman. Mm -hmm. He had to go this path, this road, because he knew she was going to meet up with him. He had to go and agree to go to Jairus' daughter mm -hmm. and raise her up for the dead, but he went this way because there was a woman with an issue of blood Hallelujah. that he was going to pass by. He took this road because there were lepers mm -hmm. that were just waiting for him. There was a blind man who couldn't see him, but heard that Jesus come, so Jesus mm -hmm. made sure <laughs> he went that way. We stuff. must be ministry minded and that is going the way that Christ has told us to go. Amen. Amen. I, I don't even know where I should start reading. <laughs> let me let me just cause I'm, that's that's blessing my life. Uh so if you look and in, in, in your scripture, if you go and read from uh verse in chapter 15, if you read from verses uh eight all the way to about 12, you're going to hear him talking about Gentiles mm -hmm. and how salvation is, it, it unifies us. A uh, true salvation brings us together. And it talks about how the Gentiles, um, they glorify God for his mercy because mm -hmm. they were not a people. And now they are, they've come in, you know, and into the family and into the fold. Uh, but you know, we have the Jews who are of the circumcision who were chosen and the Gentiles mm -hmm. who received Jesus Christ. And now they are chosen and salvation brings mm -hmm. us all together. Here it is. Unity, unity, unity. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times we can say it, but Paul doesn't, he doesn't neglect to remind us that it doesn't matter because now we have, we have Gentiles. Here's a scripture. He even starts quoting other parts of the, uh, of the scriptures talking about how rejoice with the Gentiles. The Gentiles are rejoicing. The praise is coming from the Gentiles. Uh, mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Lord, all ye Gentiles and laud him, all ye people. Isaiah even talks about how the Gentiles will rise up and, and, and one that comes from the Jews will reign over talking about Jesus Christ. So we are all unified through salvation. 
That is so important. So evangelism is a huge part mm -hmm. of what we do in salvation. And that is in sharing the gospel. Paul says, he says um, uh, in verse 16, he says, listen, I'm, I've been given the grace as a minister of Jesus Christ to share the gospel, not just to people who have heard, mm -hmm. but to people who haven't heard. So I, we challenge you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't just always say God is good all the time, all the time. God's good <laughs> to people who already know Jesus Christ. We challenge you to step out there, especially because we need to redeem the time because the days are evil and Jesus is coming. Tell somebody who does not, who has not heard, as the scriptures say, about Jesus Christ. Evangelism is a huge part and unfortunately sometimes the most neglected part of how we serve our neighbors mm -hmm. when we're when we're selfless we will think about others more than we think about ourselves and ultimately it's about souls mm -hmm. um i heard um someone say it's the eternal life that matters yeah souls it's about souls because ultimately this world will pass away That's right. and it, souls will either go to be with god for eternity or go <sighs> to be separated from him for eternity so with that love and that selfless mm -hmm. that charity in us that we should be in our ministry mindedness, like mindedness in ministry, that we should, um, the ministry of evangelism is very important. We saw that Paul wanted to go to the Roman church, but he was delayed because he was evangelizing. To, he was preaching the, the gospel. He was going, right. called to the Gentiles, and he said, I would love to go in fellowship. That's right. Here it is. <laughs> I would love to go in fellowship and sit down with fellow believers, but what's more important? evangelizing the lost and the Roman church, when he was writing to them, they understood that they understood that he had a purpose right. and that he was not going to be deterred from the calling and the purpose that God had on his life. So when we stay ministry minded, keep in mind that a part of that is evangelism. That is the great commission. commission. We should go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the father, son, and the Holy ghost teaching them to observe all Thanks. things whatsoever he has, Jesus Christ has commanded them. So we have to go to the hedges and the highways. We have to compel them that God's house may be full. We have to share the good news or the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can't just come to church and do a little bit of service mm -hmm. and think we've done anything. And then the rest of the week, we are not sharing the good news that we receive when we gather in God's house. Also, the um, ministry of giving. Here it is, Paul. He was talking mm -hmm. about the um, ministry of giving, how um, he wanted to bring to Jerusalem, the um, Christians in Jerusalem, an offering that was taken up by the Macedonians. Mm -hmm. And the Macedonians wanted to sow back into the Jerusalem church because it was the Jerusalem church that reached out to them. And many were converted because of the ministry of the Jerusalem church. You see this harmony. Mm -hmm. So the ministry of giving, meeting the needs of the church is very important. Mm -hmm. We can't just come and receive a word. We can't just come and receive prayer, receive healing, and not give back to the church. Mm -hmm. And it starts with our finances. Amen. We don't like to talk about it, but that is the enemy. When we don't want to talk about, my, oh, there they go, talking about money in the church. Guess what? This is God's economy. He mm -hmm. said, if you give, Amen. don't rob, give. If That's you right. give, you're going to be blessed, but that there may be what? Meat for my house, Amen. that the needs of his house, God's house is taken care of. Now, of course, God does not need our money because he owns everything. But he wants his children to be blessed. Amen. He believes in reciprocating. He believes in the, the law of sowing and reaping. It is his law. And he wants us to abide by that so that we will be taken care of and that we will be blessed. And a part of being ministry-minded and like-minded, we must give. Give in our service. Give in our time. Give in our money. Amen. Um, and and, and the, the mortgage company doesn't accept spiritual money. They, no. they, they're expecting the mortgage to be paid. <laughs> the BLP, the life people don't accept spiritual money. They don't accept tongues. They, they, they are looking for a check to be They don't paid. accept your prayers. And so this is also God's um, mechanism for making sure that the ministry continues and so that widows can be cared for, so yes. that the homeless can be yes. cared for. 
Um, he said, listen, um, and, the, and, w and when you have done it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. So mm -hmm. get, when you see someone hungry, feed them. Mm -hmm. That's how that's done. It's by us giving. It's giving our service and our time and our finances. You know, you know, when you see somebody naked, clothe them. When you mm -hmm. see them out, bring them in. That is all a part of God's economy. And we're not going to pull that out because it makes some people uncomfortable to right. talk about. Right. We have to have that conversation because that is a way he continues the seed of the word being sown and the love of Christ being shown. And then for his mm -hmm. people to be grown, to be blessed because they would trust God in his economy. Amen. Whatsoever is not a faith is sin. If you know to do right and Just don't do it. it it's sin. So we don't want to dwell in sin or, no. you know, deal in sin. We want to be free. We want to be blessed. We want to um, receive all of the word and obey mm -hmm. and live in the entire world so we can be entirely blessed. Amen. I don't want a partial blessing. I don't know about you, but God is just asking me to get a partial of what he's blessing me with to his house that I can receive a full oh, blessing a and God. then in verse uh, 30 Amen. of chapter 15 it says now I beseech you brethren for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the spirit that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me so here's Amen. Paul appealing to them to pray for me yeah. and so prayer for all aspects of those living the Christian life and so we need to pray for um, pastors who not just are struggling, but pastors who are doing well, Amen. that we should pray for leaders in the church. We should pray for our missionaries in the foreign field. We should pray for the evangelists who are daring to take a stand. Right. I, I remember watching the, um, an article uh, and a video of the, um, the preacher or the evangelist that went to what they call chop in Seattle, that block of, um, protest. And he went there to share the gospel and they literally were choking him. Choking he was him being out. persecuted. Here it is the scripture. We are in the last days where they were got violent with him simply because he was telling them about Jesus. My heart went out to him and I prayed for that man mm -hmm. that he would have the strength and the tenacity Jesus to continue name. in that and that we should pray for everyone. Pray for those who are uh, the scripture says if a man be overtaken in the fall, go and restore that we should pray for them. Pray for those who are struggling. Pray for those who may have an art. Pray for pray for your enemies. Pray for those who despise you Amen. and do you wrong. Pray. But even in the church, as far as believers, we should constantly pray for one another. Pray for the one who is struggling and fighting depression. Pray for the one who seems like they have it all together He's and their children are all together and they live in a comfortable life. Pray Jesus for them pray. that they will not fall or yield to temptation. We should constantly pray. So if Paul, Paul, yeah. Paul is asking the church that he is writing to, dealing with their issue, to say, pray for me. Pray that I go forth. Pray um, then the things and the endeavors that I'm doing in ministry, that they are successful. Uh, it's so interesting if you read verse 31 to 33, I mean 32, 31 to 32, the things he asked for prayer. And you would think that, um, you know, you would think people would accept money. Right. He said, pray that they will actually accept this offering that I'm taking to them. Pray because these are all the things that line up in the word of God. And if we, if the enemy comes in mm -hmm. and causes one person to stumble or one person to fall, it will affect the harmony of the church. Amen. And so when we go over to um, chapter 16, uh, it's such a blessing because it really identifies ministry minded people in the ministry of Jesus Christ who are serving God as God's house. And, uh, and so we wanted to highlight several of them because Paul now is commending, he's giving commendations to these great example of those who are in ministry who are not just in ministry, who are focused on ministry. Amen. He's commending them and he's recommending them. Mm -hmm, because he says, mm -hmm. I commend to you, Phoebe, our sister, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is in Centria, that ye receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. For she hath been a succorer or a helper, a great helper of many and of myself also. So here it is, Phoebe. Phoebe is a woman in ministry, mm -hmm. um, uh, what we would call a deaconess, mm -hmm. and that she's a leader. Amen. Glory to God. She's a leader in the church, and I wanted to take this one because um, it, this is not uh, a woman trying to um, 
support women. Mm. And then we just cast that off to the side. That we need women. Um, uh, Senior Pastor used to say this, that if all the women leave the church, he said, my final message will be, brethren, I fare thee well. Because we need, and we don't need them in the kitchen. We don't need them. I know I'm getting in trouble right now. We don't need them um, just uh, washing feet or Amen. bringing a cup of water. Amen. Amen. We need them serving in ministry, Praise serving God. in their gifts, serving in areas of leadership. You, um, and that because the Bible says that there is neither Jew nor Greek, mm-hmm. male nor female, that we are all one in the body and as one. And that we don't look at a woman as a woman, but we see her for her gifts and her mm-hmm. desire and her focus. And here's Paul recognizing this one woman mm-hmm. who not just helped him, but helped many. So it wasn't just because she did something for him, right. but he saw her doing things for Sorry. many. And he said, receive her Amen. and assist her. Amen. Be her assistance. Amen. So we know she was a person of leadership. And then he goes down to... Um, Verse 3, it says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, Mm -hmm. unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. So here is Priscilla and Aquila, Aquila and Priscilla, who are a married couple. Mm -hmm. And if you go into the other scriptures, you can read more about them. But they're a a married couple who is in ministry. Mm -hmm. And that um, they taught Paul a trade, tent making. But also, they were so dogmatic about ministry and serving the church and serving Christ that they were willing to give down their life. They were willing to sacrifice together. So let me speak to you married couples, married couples who are, you need to serve together Mm -hmm. in ministry and need to be one accord. I believe strong churches are built by strong families where there are strong marriages. Amen. That when you have strong marriages who are willing to sacrifice, and it's not me keeping you down and I'm being lifted up or you stay home and I'm in ministry in the church, that we need to serve together Amen. and be willing to sacrifice. Now, here's my job to sacrifice my life for you, but we should both be willing to sacrifice for Christ. Amen. To present our bodies, what? as a living sacrifice, but also willing to lay down our life, that we are not going to walk away from ministry because it's not going our way, or one is in ministry more than the other. And then another person uh, in verse 21 that says, Timotheus, or who we commonly know as Timothy, my work fellow, and we know Timothy was um, appointed by Paul to pastor a church. So here's the younger generation mm-hmm. that um, even the ju- younger generation has a place in God's ministry and the ministry of the church. But they, too, should be like minded. I heard a, a saying, uh, try not to get in trouble, but um, we want a seat at the table. Well, if you want to sit at the table, we are more than willing to allow you to sit at the table, mm-hmm. but you must be like-minded. You can't have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. You can't bring your own doctrine or your own way of thinking. Right. You must be like-minded in the service of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And, and we should be talking the same thing, that in the essentials and doctrine, that there must yeah. be unity. But there, even the young, there is a place for your ministry, and you should be like-minded and ministry minded as well. And when all these things come together, Amen. all generations, all male and female, um, husband and wife, even the single person, Especially the single. Um, millennial, generation X, baby boomer, whatever walk of life you come from, whatever culture you come from, that there is ministry waiting for you, that we are waiting for you to join be a body fitly joined together with us and using your gifts and abilities to the glory of God. Amen. But we must be, we must stay ministry minded and we must be like minded. Amen. Amen. And finally, at the end of that chapter, verses 25 through 27 says this now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. So he said, if you do this, if we could come together, church, if we could come together and be unita- and be unified and and come in unity and sing and work and serve in unison. 
he says, now after we put all these things together, all from chapters one about living correctly and mm -hmm. sacrificing our life and consecrating for service and making sure that we honor him. When you get to the end of Romans, you see that God is able to establish us, that he, the God of, 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 of unity and of his church will bring us together and set us on the foundation that he laid. And when we stand on his foundation as one, the scripture says, upon this rock, the revelation of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, he builds his church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. And it says this, now these things, they were a mystery, but now he's written about them. They've been revealed in the scripture. They've been revealed to you in the book of Romans and throughout uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ. He said, now that they've been revealed, he has made them manifest. Now you know better. And there was a, a famous poet. He said, if you know better, you do better. Mm -hmm. Now that we know better, God will manifest his presence and see our obedience and unity and serving everybody. And then he says, to that God, the God who will establish us as a church, a unified church, a church that's not perfect, but one that's constantly working to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves. When we come together and present as unto the Lord all of those things, the Bible says to that wise God, he will be glorified. And at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, it is so that God might be glorified. That the saints might be edified, but that God might be glorified. And so to him, through Jesus Christ, that's how we do it, through Jesus Christ, that is when it will all be so. And so that's the book of Romans, Amen. glorifying God through unity and removing divisions and making sure that we keep our minds focused on ministry and on the great commandments. Amen. Amen. So that concludes our study of the book of Romans. Amen. Uh, we pray that this was a blessing to you. Uh, we, um, as a believer, uh, we want to encourage you to uh, restudy, go through all of our um, series, our series of Romans Road, and to get a deeper understanding. But go to the scriptures yourself and study and pray to God and ask him, to give you uh, a deeper understanding of his word that you may know exactly how to please him Amen. in every aspect of your life. And to the unbeliever, you may not know Jesus Christ and you're desiring to be a part of this great family. We all had to come the way of the cross. Um, there was nothing we could not pay our way in. There was no, no papers that we could I sign know. or um, there is nothing but the way of the cross. And we call it the ABCs of salvation because it's a simplified way to, for us to really see the way to Jesus Christ. And um, A being admit that you need a savior. Amen. B meaning believe in Christ alone, that Christ is our savior yes. and only Christ. And then C, commit yourself to Christ, to Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Give your life wholly to him. Confess with your mouth that you need him and believe in your heart that he did the work for you in order for you to come in. You, you believe in your heart that he died on the cross for your sins and God the Father raised him from the dead. And if you do that, you are saved and you are now joined and grafted into this wonderful family of church. Not perfect people, but people who are striving for perfection. God bless you if... Um, you want to hear more about our ministry, you can certainly email us at rmcogic at ridgelyministries.org or go to our website at ridgelyministries.org. And even there, uh, we have a new newsletter out. It's like a one-stop shop for all of our latest videos of our live stream service, our Bible study, our Ridgely Ministries review, and some other things that uh, you let you know about our ministry. You can receive that on a weekly basis if you just go to our website and just fill out the form um, that we will put you on our mailing list that you will receive our newsletter. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and share our videos with whomever you are come in contact with. Be the evangelist that God has called us all to be. And by sharing these videos and pointing people to Jesus Christ. This is all about Christ. We do this right. for Jesus Christ and for him to be glorified. God bless you. So good to have you again. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next week for new installments for of our Bible study. God bless you. Take care. Why don't you open your mouth? Open your mouth again to worship God. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
bless the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you. Hallelujah. We need you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Love you, Father.